Yes, hello everyone. Welcome to the live stream. I really appreciate everybody once again showing up on Sunday mornings. I know I delayed it a little bit. I think I'm going to go with that 11:15 time in the future. It really gives me a little bit um a little bit more flexibility within the morning. I think I have my phone and my cell phone volume up too loud. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today is like a pre and actually during vacation like diet and um and fasting plan it's kind of interesting because i always like to tighten up the diet right before i go away but I would, i'll explain the whole thing to map it out i did some videos like this maybe last year before we went on vacation around the same time of year but let's welcome everyone let's say hey patel from from the uk and you're going on the holiday soon too so fantastic that's great so hopefully you'll get something out of this presentation then we got Rosie from New York. Once again, Rosie from New York always shows up, which is really nice. And then we also got Harry from New York, which oh, who always shows up, which is so nice too. So thanks for showing up. So let's do like a little bit of a explanation of like what we're gonna cover today. So we're gonna go over a vacation diet and workout guide. Now, even though this is like a summertime vacation, you really can do this anytime you're going away. And the whole key to this whole this whole process is the prep work like the what you do a week before you go on vacation is so important to make sure you don't gain too much weight when you're on vacation and you want to have fun when you're on vacation that's my whole you know my whole concept I want to enjoy myself when I go away but I don't want to come back from vacation four five six pounds heavier and like regret everything I did and everything I ate so the key to it and we're gonna go over it in great detail is what you do the week before so for example the goal is going to be to lose a few pounds this week because I'm actually going away a week from today. We're driving out to the beach. We're going out to Long Island. We always, we do that every single year. I'm gonna be leaving Sunday. I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with the live stream next week. Maybe I'll do it from the car, which I would love to do. Maybe just the Q&A and I'll have my daughter or my wife kind of like read your questions. It'll be a lot of fun. Maybe we'll do that. We'll see, it depends on what time we leave. So my goal is gonna be to lose a few pounds this week right i also want to like tighten up the workout i'm going to explain exactly what i'm going to be doing and i also want to like deplete my glycogen stores and if you're following me you, you kind of know what i mean by that but pretty much when you eat carbohydrates right whatever you don't burn right then they get stored away in the muscle and you live in the form of glycogen so i want to deplete my glycogen stores maybe i can hold 2,000, 2,500 calories of stored energy stored carbohydrates in the muscle but i want to empty those out this week, the week before vacation, and I might even dip into a mild state of ketosis the last couple of days. This is oh, this is gonna help me lose maybe three, four, five pounds this week. I may even lose more. It's amazing when I really deplete. And it'll, it'll give me a lot of leeway. So when I do go on vacation, and I'm kinda like cheating a little bit and eating, maybe drinking some light beers and things like that, I'm just gonna fill up my muscles with glycogen, go back to the weight, that I weigh right now a week before vacation. But I'll, I'll explain the whole thing to you. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go through the pre-vacation diet and workout plan. I'll tell you how, how I'm gonna work out this week. And then I'll tell you exactly how I will be eating and what I'll be doing when I'm going away. And you can just mimic this. This is a good guide whether you're going away anywhere in the world or you're going in, in the winter, the summer, whatever. It really works for everything. If you have any questions, obviously answer, answer ask me your questions. And then at the end, my last slide I always do a nice Q&A and I'm going to show you the exact type of meals, the exact meals that I'm going to be like duplicating and eating this week. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to eliminate, how I'm going to eliminate calories. Okay. Okay. So let's jump right into it. So this is the pre-vacation -vac diet and fasting protocol for the week. I'm going to stick to my favorite fasting strategy, which is 18-6 time restricted eating. And this is what I mean by that. I'm gonna fast for 18 hours every single day, and then I'm gonna take in all my calories within a six hour eating window. And the fact that I'm doing that every single day, I'm gonna do it now for seven days, that's time restricted eating. If I would do that only once or twice a week or intermittently, I would call that intermittent fasting. I know I bring that up every single live stream, but it's really good to know the difference because there's definitely pros and cons to both. So my whole goal for this week, I definitely wanna be, if you look at the bottom, the last bullet point in this slide is I definitely want to be in a calorie deficit without question, no doubt about it. So I'm going to wake up in the morning. We'll talk about the workout. I'm going to take a fasted workout, but we'll talk about that more in great detail in the next slide. Then I'm going to drink my black coffee. I'm going to drink my herbal tea. 
you know, I'm going to drink my Pellegrino mineral water, which I think is so important to stay properly hydrated. I might squeeze a little bit of lemon in, in that mineral water. You know, I might put a cucumber slice. I might put a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Those are all things that can possibly help you even keep blood sugar under control. I'm going to stay really well hydrated. And then I'm going to break my fast after my workout. And I'm going to be work working out in a fasted state all week. You know, maybe around 1, 2 o'clock, something like that. And then I'm also going to have a protein shake to make sure I keep my, my protein up, which I'll probably do that like right, right post-workout. And then I'm going to have my normal dinner maybe 7 o'clock. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to be cutting our calories when we go over the meals. And there are certain things that I do now that I'm not going to do this week. Like, for example, I don't really talk about it too much, but I love dark chocolate. I love like 85% or higher dark chocolate. This is one of my favorite bars. I love this brand. It's, it's incredible. You know, and, and I do think dark chocolate is good for you. High in magnesium, high in fiber, really good for you. So these are the type of things how I'm going to eliminate calories. Like, for example, if I would have maybe a third of this bar, which I typically would, that's 180 calories. So I'm going to do little things like this to eliminate calories from my diet this week. So no dark chocolate. I'm just going to do my two meals a day with a protein shake. I'm probably going to cut back on other things too. I, I Sometimes I have a tendency to grab a handful of like walnuts. I love like cracking, getting walnuts in the shell and cracking them open myself. But every five, six walnuts is 190 calories. Some days I can take in four or 500 calories of just walnuts. So I'm not going to be doing that. So I'm really going to be strict with two meals a day and one protein shake. Hey, Blue Sky, good morning. Oh, thanks for showing up. I really appreciate it. That's great. So, okay, so then we're going to also obviously, like I always say, I'm going to prioritize protein in both of the meals I'm going to be eating. I'm going to try to stick with my about 150 grams of protein per day. And like I always say, every, every four ounces of chicken, fish, meat of animal protein is about 25 grams. So, for example, if I ate maybe six to eight ounces of animal protein for lunch, six to eight ounces of animal protein for dinner, that's probably going to put me at about 120 grams of protein. Then I do one protein shake, and we'll talk about the shake. I'm probably going to do like a whey protein shake, which I really like. Like, you know, it's like the rock star of protein powder. It's really high in like branch chain amino acid, leucine, isoleucine, valine, which is so good to maintain muscle mass and just and just to put on muscle. It's my favorite probably protein powder. I like, I like um, vegan and vegetarian protein powders too, like pea and hemp, but probably whey is probably my favorite. And that's going to bring me in at about 150 grams of protein. I'm also going to really, like I said, since I'm not going to be eating the walnuts, I'm not going to be having like the dark chocolate. I'm probably just going to have maybe like one fruit, some berries with like lunch or something like that. I'm going to be eating a pretty tight, low carbohydrate diet for the week as well. I'm going to keep my carbs instead of what I typically would eat, which would be maybe 100 to 150 grams, four to 600 calories. I'm going to kick it down to maybe 50 to 100 grams of carbohydrates. So I'm gonna keep the carbs kinda of low. Obviously no processed foods, right? I'm not gonna eat any junk. I'm gonna keep the diet really clean, whole natural foods. My macro ratios are gonna fall in line like they typically would. Most of my calories are gonna come from fat, not from trying to eat fat, not from chasing fat, but just by, from eating my typical avocados, my salmon, my sardines, my whole eggs, you know, my red meat, just in filet mignon, even lean meat. A greater percentage of the calories come from come from fat. I'm still going to probably take in 50, 60 percent of my calories from fat. I'm going to keep the carbs low, like under 400 calories, two to 400 calories, and then I'll take in, like I said, at 150 grams of protein. So I'm really going to tighten things up. And the good thing about like going on vacation is that you're very motivated. First of all, you I, I sometimes I find. The funnest part of going on vacation sometimes is just anti the anticipation of it. Like you're looking forward to it. Oh my God, I can't wait to go on vacation. <laughs> Watch on vacation. Yeah, it's kind of fun. But I think like the lead up to it is almost just as fun, or maybe even more fun than actually being on vacation. And I'm I'm always very motivated the week before. I'm, I'm in a good, I'm in a better mood. I can't wait to go away. And I'm pretty motivated to stick to something like a little more strict like this. Like I may not necessarily miss my dark chocolate or my walnuts or a couple other things I might grab. Sometimes I'll grab two or three fruits. Lately, I've been eating a lot of watermelon because it's in season. But watermelon, even though it does have potassium and L-citrulline in it, it still is high in sugar and high. In, you know, the calories can get you. So I'm, I'm, I'm motivated to eliminate all those things 
this this week. Hey, Richard. Hey, good morning. Thanks for showing up. West Virginia, real cool. Thanks for showing up, Rich. That's great. Right. Obviously, no processed foods. Also, I'm gonna drink pretty much typically not every night, but typically most nights I may have like a glass of red wine, like a, just one glass. I'm not gonna do any of that this week. Maybe one night, who knows? But I, I, I'm gonna really minimize the alcohol because I know I'll be drinking a little bit of alcohol on vacation. And like I said, I definitely do want to be in a pretty good calorie deficit. And this will all fall into place for you when, when I show you the exact meals I'm gonna be eating at the end of the presentation. Let's see, James is here too. Hey James, thanks for showing up. James, do you think if you eat clean that your body will just fall into greater health and weight? Yeah, oh, I, in the long run, absolutely James, I definitely do. And I'm, I'm assuming, I guess people can define eating clean in a lot of different ways. Like typically, like more bodybuilding-ish, like in the 80s, 90s, people thought eating clean would be more like eating very low fat, right? Eating higher carb and eating an adequate amount of protein. In my mind, how I would define eating clean, and I think you are on the same page here, is just no junk food. Because I do eat, eat a relatively higher fat diet. So just pretty much no processed food. If you're eating a whole natural food diet, and the two key things to track, in my opinion, will be calories and taking an adequate amount of protein, you're gonna do great. Even if you're eating a higher carb type diet. You know, the whole, as long as you're keeping calories in line, so you're not really gorging and overeating, and then you're taking in an adequate amount of protein. I think protein is the most important macronutrient to track because there's the thermic effect of protein. People who eat protein are very satisfied. There's that protein leverage theory hypothesis, which I always talk about, that most people overeat, in my opinion, and these researchers felt like came up with this protein leverage hypothesis saying that you're gonna keep on eating until you get your adequate amount of protein, whatever that might be for you. So if you're picking foods that are very low in protein, you're gonna have to overeat to get that protein. For example, if you're not having like animal protein, if you're not eating eggs, or if you're not, if you're a vegan or vegetarian, you're not taking in like hemp or pea or protein powder, you're just not getting enough protein. Let's say you're a 170 pound guy and you've only eaten 50 grams of protein. In my opinion, you're gonna keep on eating those low protein type foods just to get that protein. So it's real important. Calories and protein are the two main. I lean more towards a high fat, lower carb type diet. It worked best for me, it works best for my blood work. I'm never hungry. But eating clean could just mean, like I'm saying, no processed foods. And you can adjust your macros to whatever fits your lifestyle. But track calories and make sure you're taking in an adequate amount of protein. I think it's so it's so key. Okay, so let's go over. I don't have too many slides today because this is pretty simple. So you pretty much have the general concept of how I'm going to be eating this week. But I'm going to put myself in a calorie deficit, only eating two meals a day, going to be fasting 18-6 with a protein shake. Okay, so let's go over pretty much the workout that I'm going to be doing this week, which is it's kind of interesting. I, I, have, I also have a, a tendency to hurt myself, which I do over and over again, working out too hard right before vacation. I remember even taking like ski trips and I wound up hurting my back before I go on a ski vacation because I worked out so hard. I'm gonna, I, was, I was so concerned my whole life, oh, I'm not gonna be working out for a couple of weeks, even though I'm skiing. I'd be going like a windsurfing trip or surfing trip. I kill myself in the gym, hurt myself, and then I, I can't enjoy the trip. So now that I'm older and a lot smaller, I take a completely different uh, philosophy when it comes to working out the week before I go away. First of all, I, I am motivated, so I do want to put a lot of time in. So I like to keep the intensity relatively on the low side, but increase the volume of training. And I'm gonna do a few things. So, so let's go through the whole routine. Okay, so first off, all my workouts for this week, I'm gonna be doing in a fasted state. Typically what I do is that when I do my cardio, I would do my cardio fasted. Because I'm not interested in like performance when I'm doing my cardio. I'm the, I don't do cardio. Like I don't walk and I don't go, go on the elliptical in my gym or the Stairmaster to like necessarily win a race. I'm not competing. I just do it because I wanna have a good, strong, hard cardiovascular system. I wanna increase my VO2 max. Your VO2 max stands for your maximal oxygen consumption, meaning that when you're very aerobically fit, you can consume more oxygen. So I, I do my aerobics just to be healthy. So the fact that I'm doing it in a fasted state, maybe my performance won't, won't be as good, but I don't care because I'm still getting the benefits of doing aerobics. Okay, so I'm gonna do them all fasted. Whereas in the past, when I would do my resistance training, I probably would do like a pre-workout, like protein shake or something like that. But I wanna keep my calories down, so I'm not gonna do that. 
But what I am going to do, and I took, made a little note here, E-A-A-A's, is that I am going to take in an essential amino acid supplement when I do my workouts this week because I want to make sure I'm not low on protein. And this is the one that I've been taking. Unfortunately, this one is no longer available. Um, I was buying this on Amazon. It was on sale for like $14, and it was giving you like 30 servings. Typically, it would be like double or triple that price, but I think they ran out of them, unfortunately. The other brand I like is Keon. And what this is, this is just the powder, and it has all the essential amino acids in it. So it has all your brands change, your, you know, like I said, your leucine, isoleucine, valine, and then all the other six essential amino acids. And it's minim minimal in calories. It's only going to be about 10, 15 calories per scoop. So technically, yes, it might break my fast a little bit, but it's much lower in calories than doing a scoop of say a whey protein isolate. Like a scoop of this whey protein isolate is gonna be 120 calories. So I'm gonna eliminate like 100 calories from doing an essential amino acid supplement. Plus it's gonna help me with recovery. It's gonna fuel my workout a little bit. On the days that I am doing those, as you see, I'm gonna be doing three days of resistance training, full body. It's gonna help me get through the workout a little bit, which is good. I think Juicy got some, some um, currently on a 48 hour fast. Sounds great, cool. I recommend the video on the best foods or just anything in general on I really get you know I, I guess that that's the pigmentation thing um, I'm not that familiar with that but um, I'll look into it a little bit but I'm not, I can't say that I'm an expert on that though juicy thanks okay so so if we got that all workouts fasted but I'm gonna take it I'm gonna take I'm going to take an essential amino acid supplement okay now I'm gonna do three full body resistance training workout a week workouts per week but I'm gonna keep the weights relatively light, I'm gonna keep the reps high, and I'm gonna do more metabolic stress, stress type training, which is pump training. You know, like there's three general ways in which you put on muscle and maintain muscle mass. What's it, what's it like creating muscle tension? You know, you know, lifting heavier weights and working hard. The other thing is like muscle damage. You make those little microscopic tears in your muscle. But the third way to put on muscle and hypertrophy is really metabolic stress, where you pump the muscle up and metabolites build up like hydrogen and lactate and things like that and you get that burn so I'm gonna do like pump burn training I like that so much because you're not gonna hurt yourself if you train like that you're not really lifting heavy weights the time on the load will be on the high side for example if you do 12 reps but you're doing a five second rep cadence what's that that's like 60 70 seconds on the load and you're gonna pump the muscle up so I'm not gonna hurt myself this week I'm gonna train my entire body in one session, it'll probably take me 45 minutes to an hour, three days per week, with high rep, relatively lightweight type training for the week, which will be nice. I love training like that too, and I'm gonna do the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Let's see, oh, Jeff, Jeff is here too, okay, let's see what Jeff's got. I was using the vegan uh, aminos after tennis, and this week I tried it, the evenings on my fasted days, doing alternate fasting, it helped me not be hungry. Yes, I think I, I think that it definitely helps me with the hunger too, Jeff. No question about it. I think it helps me with recovery as well too. I really do like them. Unfortunately, like I said, they, they're, they're gone now. I, I, it was too good to be true. There was like $15. They're normally like $30 to $50 for a supplement, supplement like that. like that. But I'm still, I'm still debating st starting maybe a supplement company. And if I do, I did so much research on it a few months ago. And I just felt like I couldn't get the numbers to work, meaning that in the quantities that I was going to manufacture these supplements in, like do a, like a run of like 1,500, the margins were so, so tight that it, would be, it, it just didn't kind of make sense to me. But I may, I'm gonna, I may look into it again. And that's one of the supplements I would want to start with is an essential amino acid supplement. I wanted to just do that amino 9, which is this, the exact ingredients that's in this, um, this vegan aminos. We'll see. Okay, so besides my three resistance training workouts, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm also gonna do two like high intensity cardio workouts, really short, maybe 20 minutes. I'm gonna need to get on the um, stair mass or maybe the elliptical, go easy, you know, warm up for five minutes, do one minute hard, one minute easy, maybe do five or six high intensity intervals. Why I'm doing that, it's good for your VO2 max. It's good to really get you in top, top aerobic shape. It's aerobic shape. shape. Plus there's that, um, Exercise post oxygen consumption epoch where you know it's gonna help you burn a little bit more calories even after the workout when you do that high intensity type work. So I'm gonna do two workouts like that a day, but I'm not gonna hurt myself. I'm not gonna go too crazy. Maybe 85, 90 percent, 90 percent of my max heart rate. So say if I'm 60, 
you take this out, you figure out your max heart rate. You take 220, you minus your age. So say I'm gonna be 60, so say you're 60. So my max heart rate is 160 beats. When I do my um, one minute intervals, I'm probably gonna go to like 155, 160. I'm not gonna go too crazy. And I just do maybe five or six of those. So the workout will be easy, 20 minutes. Then I cool down with all my, my mobility movement. But I am gonna do this, and I love doing this anyway. And I'm really motivated this week to do this. Even with my early clients, um, one of my great clients just came back, which I'm so happy about. But I do train him early, but I'm still gonna walk 30 minutes in the morning in a faster state, and I love doing this. And then I'm gonna walk, walk 30 minutes again in the evening. When I mean evening, obviously when it's still light out. So maybe um, right before dinner, we're gonna be eating dinner around 7, 7.30, maybe around six o'clock, I'll take another 30 minute walk like right near my house. The first walk's gonna be along the Hudson River, which I love. I go to Croton, which is maybe 15 minutes from my house, and I walk along the Hudson River first thing in the morning. I just love it, it's great. And you just see a lot of the same people, so it's kind of like a, a fun thing to do. Let's see what you should get. Can, can push-ups be just as effective Okay, can push-ups be just as effective as lifting as long as you're hitting the same amount of reps and compensate? Well, I wouldn't say the same amount of reps. I would just say intensity. Like if you're doing a, a good hard set of push-ups, I think it's just as good as anything. In fact, I mean, you can say when you're bench pressing, right, it's a little more isolated because you're resting on the bench even though you're hitting your chest and your shoulders and your triceps and maybe you can go heavier on a bench press. But when you're doing a push-up, right, you're doing a whole core movement. It's like doing a plank and a push-up at the same time. So I love push-ups. I think it's one of the best movements. I do them all the time. I very rarely do a full body or even upper body workout without doing a set of two of push-ups. See, I, I, I personally don't like to put my hands flat on the ground because I have this like, gangly assist in my wrist. So I do them with the push-up bars, kind of like the push, perfect push-up device that was popular years ago. I use one without the twist, you know, but I, I think push-ups are wonderful a wonderful exercise. So this is gonna be my general workout routine. All workouts fasted, but I'm gonna take an essential amino acid supplement, three full body workouts, each workout will be 45 to an hour long, two short hit workouts, and then a 60 minute walk, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening. I'm gonna do that every single day. It's a real simple, and you can just modify this. I know this will, may, might be excessive, if if you know if you're not used to doing it, but sometimes it's, it's good to get kind of motivated pre-vacation. I have to say I've had it, it happen to me hundreds of times because I've been owning my gym for over 30 years now. People get so upset when they come back from vacation and they're five six pounds heavier, and and it, they're like they almost wish they didn't go on vacation because they feel like they just overindulge and, and they just feel horrible, and they say next time I'm not going to do this. So the key to doing this vacation thing is you got to prep. Just tighten it up. I mean, maybe you have a, a week before vacation where you're not enjoying yourself. Maybe you're a little bit hungry, right? You know, but it's it's going to make you enjoy the vacation a lot more when you come back and you're no heavier <laughs> than a week before you left. So that's the key. Because I, when I go away, you're going to see on the next slide, I want to be able to eat the foods I like. I want to be able to do the things that, you know, that I want to do. Can you plateau more than once or is it just, oh, you can definitely plateau more than once. You can, you're gonna constantly plateau with everything, with weight loss, with trying to put on muscle, with trying to get to getting stronger. Plateaus are just, unfortunately, they're, they're unavoidable. They're gonna happen. That's why you gotta keep on experimenting and trying different things. And, and also too, like how strong can you get? You know, I used to know based on how much I weighed, like when I was really into like, um, you know, bodybuilding and lifting weights. I even did a little bit of powerlifting, obviously not competing. I knew that when I weighed, say, 168 pounds, what I can bench and what I can squat. But I knew that if I went back, say I tried to lose some body fat and I cut back, say I went to 160 pounds, I'm eight pounds lighter, almost impossible not to lose a little bit of muscle. I couldn't, you know, squat or I couldn't bench press, you know, as much as I did at 168. Then I would reach a point where, say, I went to 172 pounds, I didn't get any stronger than I was 168. So these are all things that you learn once you start experimenting. So, you know, you have to find your sweet spots, you gotta mix things up, you gotta take diet breaks, you gotta take workout breaks. That's why, that's part of this program here too. I like taking a resistance training break when I go on vacation, because I wanna let my joints rest. I think it's just good to take a break now and then from all the things. That's why I love taking a diet break. That's why I love taking, you know, taking time off when you're, when you're doing vacation. So my vacation workout is gonna be really simple. Okay, first of all, I'm not gonna do 18-6. I'm gonna have more flexi flexibility. I'm gonna do 16-8. 
and we stay at a hotel where they actually give you free breakfast. I'm, you know, I'm so used to skipping breakfast. I don't want the calories from breakfast, even on vacation. So I'm gonna skip breakfast when I'm away. There's a coffee shop we love going to. That's one of my favorite parts of the trip is I get to talk to my wife in the morning and maybe my kids may come, we get a cup of coffee because I don't really see them like that during the week in our normal lives. Everyone's so busy in the morning. So that's, that's almost my funnest part of the whole trip is just talking to my family in the morning, getting coffee. And I, and we like that dark roast type coffee. There's a great coffee shop that we go to all the time when we're out there, which is wonderful. So I'm gonna skip breakfast. Once again, I'm gonna stay really hydrated, drink tons of liquids during the day. And then um, I'm gonna eat pretty much whatever I want, but I'm gonna still stick to Tumat. And what I love doing is that we go to, it's kind of like a, um, Kind of somewhat of a famous um, Italian deli. There's a few, a few of them. We're going out to the Hamptons. If you're from New York, you know what I mean. It's um, I forget the name of it. It's, it's like a the Chicos, but it's not the Chicos. I forget the name. Where we buy like you know we'll buy the baguettes, a uh, bread. We buy like fresh turkey. We'll buy avocados. We'll buy salad. So I love. I never really eat like that. I almost I absolutely love having like a turkey, a fresh turkey sandwich with avocado, a little extra version extra virgin olive oil and, and some balsamic vinegar on the beach. I just absolutely love that. You know, I don't really drink on the beach though. We won't drink beers or drink wine on the beach. I know some people like to do that. I personally don't. You know, I just like that. I'll have probably, you know, a couple of drinks at night. You know, and I really love it. I may have an apple. I may eat some fruit that I typically wouldn't eat. I, I absolutely love doing that. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be doing too mad. Once again though, I'm going to do my 90 minute fasted walk first thing in the morning. So we pretty much go to the beach every single day. Even as long as it's not pouring, even if it's cloudy, we go. You know, we get our coffee in the morning, start hydrating, we pick up the food, then we go right to the beach. And I like to walk 45 minutes away from the beach, 45 minutes back. I don't like to walk along the beach because of my knee and, and uneven surfaces. I still like walking on the pavement and I love doing it. So I do a 90 minute fasted walk it's like I'm meditating when I'm moving. I just absolutely love it. It really relaxes me. I feel like I'm doing something, but I'm also letting my body rest. I'm taking a break from the resistance training. I'm still paying for that from a few months ago when I went a little too hard in the gym. My elbows, my tendonitis, and my elbows are giving me a little bit of trouble right now. So it's going to be a good, deserved, well needed like rest from from lifting weights. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Jeff says around 400 total calories for the day yesterday for me. Well, there's a nice low calorie day. So I enjoyed my breakfast today. Sounds good. Sausage, meatballs, whoa, blueberry, buckwheat pancakes. That sounds great, Jeff. You deserved it. I mean, when you have it like, when you have, that's the nice thing. That's why this fasting stuff works so good because you really do get to eat a lot of the foods you really do want to when you want them, you know? So I think it's a great way to cycle calories. You have a low calorie day, then you can have a good, a nice day where you eat, eat some more, which is great. Oh, Gene, see, oh, Gene, once again, Gene, every Sunday gives me a super chat. I really appreciate it, Gene. These super chats keep me making these videos, keeps the channel going. So I really appreciate it. Hey, Mike, I actually have been wondering if separating resistance and cardio on separate days is better than combining them on the same workout. Yeah, you know, I, I would say you have to experiment. Whatever you do first, no question about it, you're gonna have more energy for, you're gonna be do better. So I would always probably prioritize doing your cardio first. No, no, I'm sorry, the opposite. I would always prioritize doing your resistance training first because it's so important to get, get, you know, to have your concentration good and all that for your resistance training just, and just to get a good resistance training workout to put on muscle and maintain muscle. And then it's like, you can do your cardio, I would say after your resistance training if you want to do them both on the same days. But, and one other theory too is that when you're doing your resistance training, you are burning carbohydrates, right? Because that's what's fueling those type two muscle fibers. So you're lowering blood sugar. Then when you go do your cardio, you're somewhat in the lower blood sugar state and you can maybe burn a little bit more body fat if you want to do it on both days. But you can also, like I said, there's so many different ways of doing it. You can mix it up. Like one day you can do your cardio first if you want to prioritize that. I do like splitting things up for sure when it comes to doing the high intensity cardio, like I'm talking about it in this pre-vacation workout, right? I'm doing my resistance training. I'm prioritizing that three days a week. Then I'm doing my HIIT training on the opposite days. I don't count these 30 minute walks. It's almost like an active rest. Yes, I'm burning some fat, I'm building my aerobic base, but they're so easy and so enjoyable. It's not affecting the workout at all. Like for example, if you did a high intensity training workout first before your resistance training, 
you're going to get a great high intensity workout, but it's got to take something away from your resistance training if you really do the hit hard and vice versa. Like if you did your resistance training and then try to do a hard hit workout, it, you're not going to have the the energy. So if you could split it up, it, it's probably optimal. But but if you had to do them both in the same, same day, I would always do my resistance training first, pretty much. Well, if you do, I mean, you know, there's no wrong way of doing it in a way because maybe two days a week you do your resistance training work, one day a week you do your HIIT training first. So that time you prioritize HIIT, the other days you prioritize the resistance. So mix it around, but I like a split like this when you do things separately. Like you're always getting the best of every world, you know? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see, Juicy. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Rose. Sitter Alice, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. So when you say a 45 minute walk, like straight, no stopping. Oh yeah, I do straight, no stopping. You know, so every now and then, it, you know, if I do a 90 minute walk, maybe after 45, if it's a really hot day, like lately in New York, it's been crazy hot. I'm talking like tropical rainforest, humidity, heat in the 90s. And it's been like this now for like, I, I love the hot weather, but it's been like this for, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks. So if I do a 90 minute walk, like I'm gonna do today after this, I may do a 45 minute walk then I always keep um, some water in my car. I keep it canned because I don't want the heat to, to break up the plastic. I'm drinking like toxic things. So I may sit and then just drink a can of seltzer. You know, this is what I like. I'll drink a can of like Poland Spring and then I might do my second 45 minutes. So I may do that from time to time. But I don't think there's any pro or con because it's really aerobic base building. My heart rate may be only 90 be beats per minute. So I'm not really doing it as like necessarily to increase my VO2 max. I'm just building my aerobic base and I'm burning some calories. And I just mentally just feel so good to do those walks. So I think you can take a break for 45 minutes if you want to, to add, you know, easily as well. Let's see. You know, a good sandwich with good bread and some good Italian colcas isn't, isn't bad for you. Just <laughs> not bad for you. No, I totally agree, especially James, how we do it. You know, the bread is just just getting some like sugary type calories, but I love it. And they have like, they bake almost like that fresh Arthur Avenue type bread. You know, they, they bake it right in this Italian deli themselves. It's incredible. And then, and then I get the fresh turkey, so it's not even a boar's head. It's not like a cold cut. It's just fresh turkey sliced. And then I love the avocado. I either, either I buy, they, they make homemade guacamole there in the containers. I'll do that or I'll just buy avocados, depending upon how ripe they are. I'll put that on there, a little extra virgin olive oil, some balsamic vinegar. I absolutely love it. These are things that I almost look forward to all year besides going on this beach vacation. I love eating stuff like that for like a week. You may, I absolutely love it. But for example, if I didn't do this pre-workout prep and say I went on this vacation with my muscles and my liver like half full with glycogen, you know, I'd be instantly like by the second day I'm there, I'll be two, three pounds heavier from filling up, you know, from filling myself up with carbs. But the fact that I'm gonna do this plan for a week, I'm gonna go into that week four, five, six pound light. My muscles empty with glycogen. I'm actually gonna look better and look more muscular and look great probably the second or third day on the trip. And I'm, I'm gonna be almost like carb loading for a couple of days. But I, I totally agree with you. Not bad at all. Okay, let's let's see. Um, oh, Citarella. That's what that's what Rose and Harry are saying. They know it's called Citarella. That's the name of the deli. I forgot about it. That's the Italian name of the deli. Great. Thank thanks, Harriet. James um, Tolan, balance is key. Yes, I agree. Let's see what Jeff's got. I'm, I'm taking vacation for my birthday next weekend, but I'm going to try the to continue the alternate day fast. That's what ADF stands for if you're not familiar with alternate day fasting. The good thing is that my actual birthday Saturday is, ooh, that sounds great. That sounds great, I love it. That sounds good, no, ADF, I love ADF. I still gotta do a, maybe we'll do that, you know, not next Sunday, maybe the following Sunday, I keep on saying this, but let's do an alternate day fasting live stream. We'll go over all the, all the ins and out of it, because I think it is a great plan. Hey, Steve Tazic, my main man is here. So, so, so happy to see you here, Steve. I appreciate you, you've been coming every Sunday. And I know it's early uh, where you guys are, it's like three hours early, so I really appreciate it. Oh, BJ and John, wow, that's so cool. Hey guys, thanks for showing up. I'm definitely, this winter, I'm coming to California. I am definitely gonna come visit you guys. I really miss seeing everyone there. It's gonna be great. I can, you know, we'll figure it out what works for you, for you, what works for us, but I definitely wanna come to um, California this winter for sure, 100%. Mm. But thanks for showing up, guys. That's great. 
Yes, yeah, Cinderella Deli, that's right. Okay, let's see what Jeff. Okay, it's been a few months since my last resistance training. Do you recommend I start with low weight, high rep? Yes, without a question. I would do that metabolic stress type training, that pump training, no question about it, Jeff. I know where, I think you're younger than me, but you're not that much. <laughs> well, I think you may be like 10 years younger than me. I, I forget exactly how old you are, but I would definitely do it easy on the joints. I would start off relatively lightweight, stay in that like 12 rep range, five second rep cadence, meaning like two seconds up, three seconds down. You know, pick moderate weight, weight. So being that like 60 to 90 seconds time on the load, just pump the muscle up and get yourself back into it easy. And don't do, don't make the workouts too long. Limit, limit the resistance training to 45 minutes. Train your whole body in the same day. Do similar to what I'm doing. You know, just just don't hurt yourself and ease yourself back into it for sure. I know with all the tennis you're playing, and it's going to help you with tennis long term too. Let's see. Okay. Mike, what would you say is the number one tip on a 48-hour fast? I would say just to stay hydrated for sure. I mean, 48-hour fast, you're kind of on the fringe when it comes to those electrolytes. You know, you go three days, you're probably going to need like to make sure your sodium and stuff like that is, is up. I w with a 48-hour fast, and I know you do them all the time, I would just say stay really well hydrated. Drink half your weight in ounces a day. I would probably go with like the Pellegrino mineral water because you're all going to get some of the electrolytes. You get some magnesium, a little bit of, of the sodium. I would say that's the main, main tip. And I also like you're saying, and I, would, I think you may have asked the questions about working out in fasting. I would just, I wouldn't push yourself too hard in the gym or anything like that. I would personally just walk. If I'm fasting for more than say 36 hours, I don't do resistance training. I pretty much just walk. You know, so I would just take it easy, make sure you can sleep. You know, keep your stay hydrated and and make and you know keep a little bit of the eye on the electrolytes. A lot of, a lot of that has to do with how you were eating pre fast. Everything a lot of this stuff has to do with what you were doing pre the forty eight hours. Like if you're going into a into a forty eight hour fast where you've been like really in a calorie deficit and maybe you haven't been eating enough protein and maybe your electrolytes are low before you start the fast, that's how you get caught. So that has a lot to do with it. But the main tip that I say is, is, is I would just stay stay well hydrated, pretty much. Okay. You, are you, I always say you're turning 46. Wow, pretty cool. Yeah, that was great. I felt really good, I have to say. I felt really good at 45, 46. I think for me, and so I remember a couple of my older clients saying this to me. This is years ago. And they said, one guy, this guy, Lanny, he was a famous, you know, I really liked this guy, Lanny. He was a wonderful guy. He told me, you know, Mike, I felt, and this is exactly how I feel, I didn't feel any older until I was kind of in my mid-40s, and that's how I felt. I, for me, at 44, 45, I had that knee operation with that horrible result, and ever since then, I felt older. Up until like around 44, 45, I felt like I was 18. This turning 60, though, for me is really, um, I'm having a hard time with it. I feel like I'm now I'm, I've reached that next level of aging, but who knows? I mean, what could you do, right? At least we're alive and we're living. At least I made it. I'm, I'm making it to 60. You know, but 46 is great. Happy birthday, Jeff. That's wonderful. Okay. I heard that cod liver oil can be very good for health. Do you know anything? You know, at one point for a number of years, this is maybe, this is a while ago, for t about 10 years ago, I was taking like a tablespoon of cod liver every, every single day. And I was doing it for a couple of reasons. First of all, great way to get the omega 3s. Also, cod liver oil is high in vitamin D. But then I kind of switched over to, and it was less expensive than taking those fish oil, like like those Carlson's or like Nordic Naturals. It just was less expensive. But I found that the cod liver oil, and that's kind of like an old fashioned thing, even like kind of an Italian thing, like your your Italian grandmother would give you like a tablespoon of cod liver oil when you weren't feeling well or you were sick. Maybe there was something to it because it was so high in vitamin D, right? Who knows? But I found that it, it did repeat on me a little bit. Whereas if I would do like a, a Carlson's or Nordic Naturals, like fish oil, and what you want to look for is the EPA. You know, I wanted like I would try to get like a thousand milligrams a day of those omega threes. It didn't repeat on me at all. It was like nothing. It would, and it tasted good. I found the cod liver oil to be a little rougher, you know, to swallow, even flavored, and I would burp it up a little bit. So, but but if you're okay with the gene, I do think it's a good thing to do. But okay, one thing about these fish oil supplements. And I just read some studies on it, and I just and how I got turned on to it. You know, I always talk about this guy, Peter Atiyah, that Harvard doctor who's a longevity expert. He did like a blog post on it maybe three, four months ago, talking about fish oil supplements in general. 
And he, he said when, a pay, when one of his patients come to him, he said they look out of it individually. Because there is some good research. I, I do think that it can help reduce inflammation, can increase that HDL, your good cholesterol, good for brain health. I like eating a diet really high in omega-3s. That's why I have my salmon and my sardines and my whole eggs. I eat that. That's a cornerstone of my diet, so I know I'm getting a high amount of omega-3s. But there is a couple of studies that did show that taking high levels of fish oil, more the prescription pills that people take, like you're getting something like 4,000 you know, milligrams, like 4 grams of EPA of omega-3s can lead to or predispose you to AFib, that irregular heart rate. It changes the tonal, it changes the heart a little bit. It's kind of interesting. And Peter T, he didn't really go out there and say, don't take fish oil. And he did say he even does give it to some patients. But if you're predisposed to AFib, or if you do have that irregular heartbeat, I probably wouldn't take a fish oil supplement. Or maybe talk about it with your doctor. But there are tons of benefits, and everyone loves these fish oil things. So it's a little, I just want to bring that up. I, I always like to bring things like that up when there's, when there's, when there's, um, you know, a couple of studies saying the same thing. And I even watched a, a podcast with Rhonda Patrick. Is that her name? Yes, Rhonda Patrick. You know, she has that other PhD. She's like a bioscientist. She, she, I think it's Find My Fitness. I think that's her podcast. She interviewed one of the top doctors who was a big believer in fish oil and did multiple um, studies on it. And he even said, yes, that's still an unknown, we need to do more studies. He didn't deny it, he said no, that it's a possibility that taking high amounts of fish oil can lead to AFib if you're predisposed to it. If you already have it, like things like that, it can, it can create an episode. You know, so keep that in mind, but I think cod liver oil is, is, is good. I actually gained muscle, which is incredible. Why do you think this is? You mean after um, a 48 hour fast, you gain muscle? I don't know, I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised uh, you did, who knows? I mean, you definitely get a little testosterone and human growth hormone boost for sure. It can go up, you know, multiple, you can go four or 500% like a 40 hour fast. Generally that happens with the rebound effect, meaning that you do a 48 hour fast, you get all those counter regulatory hormones kick in like testosterone, human growth hormone. And then when you start working out again, like days later, maybe a week later, you say, oh my God, I'm more muscular. I've had people say that. I've, I've experienced that to some degree. Let's see. So if you're doing a 40 hour fast once a week, does your body do the exact same thing each time? Your body surely won't clean up new cells over. Well, you know, hey, I think that autophagy, when he's talking about cleaning up cells, he's talking about autophagy. You know, autophagy is the body's way of, of, of re, like recycling weak and damaged organelles. It's a never ending process. No, I think it really can do that over and over and over again. But I do think you can reach your point of diminishing returns doing a 40 hour fast over and over. I mean, like you're saying, you hit plateaus and you are you know, aggressively restricting calories for two days and if your main goal is to put on muscle, hard to say, but no, I think the autophagy, I think you will keep on getting, could just think you're always, everything is constantly recycling within the body. So I think you still will get benefits from that. All right, so we got, we got the general workout on vacation, right? We're gonna, do 16 8 we're gonna skip breakfast we're gonna just stick to two meals a day like for example I kind of explained to my lunch I'm gonna have my my Italian sandwiches which I love but, but but with fresh cold cuts and then for dinner since we're in a beach environment my dinners we go to almost the same restaurant every single night we just love it I think it's the best seafood restaurant on Long Island in the Hamptons called Boswick's I love it I literally get flounder almost every single night they give you like two pounds of flounder it's unreal and it's so reasonable. Some maybe a pound and a half, two pounds. I posted pictures of it. I'm gonna do it. I'll post some pictures on Instagram and TikTok and everything. Uh, I'll probably even do a video next week from the Hamptons. So I have, you know, I'll probably get almost 80 grams of protein right there. Then they give you like some string beans and a couple of little like white potatoes. It's great. We eat that almost every single night. If not, I may get a hamburger. We go to this other like kind of a pub place where I might get a hamburger. Uh, maybe I might even eat some French fries because I'm on vacation. I'll probably drink a little rosé wine or maybe some um, some light beer or something. I'm, I'm not really much of a, of a heavy alcohol drinker when it comes to like hard alcohol. I drink beer and wine. I'll be drinking some beer or wine in the evening and I'm gonna really enjoy myself. So I'm gonna do my 90 minute fasted walk in the morning, stay hydrated, drink a couple of cups of coffee, which I love. You know, 16, eight, just two meals a day. And the nice thing about vacation, at least for us, 
we're not really um my whole family my you know, my kids are teeny bit but we're not really snackers like I'm, we're not going to be that family that goes to the beach with potato chips and with pretzels and with I'm going to have my nice sandwich and then I'm and then I'm good you know uh, and I'm not going to be drinking beers or anything on the beach so and we'll, and we, and when you come to our room we stay at this hotel I'm not gonna have like tons of snacks in the room. We just don't, I, you know, I, we're not like that. I'm not gonna have potato chips and pretzels and cookies and cakes and candies like piled in the room. We don't really live like that. So we're gonna have two good meals a day. I'm gonna kind of eat like I might, like I'm saying, I might have some French fries with my hamburger at night. So my calories, are, I'll probably be over maintenance. I'm gonna fill up my muscles with carbohydrates. I'm probably gonna end the trip four or five or six pounds heavier than before I left, but I'm gonna be going on the trip four, five, six pounds lighter from being so strict the week before. So it's gonna be a perfect wash. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a wash and I'm looking to like really enjoy myself and to give my joints, my bones, and my connective tissue in my body a rest from resistance training. Let's see, Juicy's got a few more here. Let's see. Okay, I, I don't understand how some days my face looks normal, but other days, you know, that's so hard to say, uh, Juicy. You know, it, it's pretty much water weight, I would say. And sometimes you'd be surprised, sodium, it's hard to tell. You know, unless you're cooking all your food yourself, like how much sodium you're taking in one day and not the other day, you know, that can make a big difference. But I would say most of the puffiness has to do with water retention and things like that, you know? Let's see, I just got a text. Let's see, Harry's got. Um, you go to your brother's room all the time for junk food. Oh, I guess Harry is very, like is very knowledgeable about that. Yes, yeah, you can. You see, you know what Harry's saying is that sometimes when we go on these trips, it's a group of us. Like my brother might go, and my brother's a little bit more. You know, they have a little bit of a different um, philosophy. Even though they eat really well, they love having a lot of like treats and snacks when they go on vacation in the room. So sometimes if I want to go grab something, I can always go to my brother's room. He, they have. It's incredible. They'll have cookies and cakes and some candies and some really fun things to eat. That's why my kids love going over to my brother's room. But I don't think my brother's coming with us on vacation this week, which is kind of a little disappointing. I, I wish I wish he would. We couldn't. You know, it's so hard to figure out everyone's schedule now and then. Actually, during the pandemic, you know, my wife lost a job for a couple of years. She got an incredible job now. So. We used to get a lot more time off to be able to go away. Um, we, we just couldn't, you know, we just couldn't work it out, you know, unfortunately, which is bad. Okay, so let's let us do this now. Let's, let me give you an idea. This is probably the most educational part of this whole thing. Let me show you exactly, you know, how I'm going to eat this upcoming week. Like what I mean by like a low carb, whole natural food diet and what I mean by like my macros, most of my calories are going to come from fat. I'm gonna make sure I get an adequate amount of protein and I'm gonna keep my carbohydrates relatively low. So I'm gonna show you some lunches and dinners. So I'll give you a really good idea of what the two meal a day diet is. And, and, these, are, and these are meals that I've, that I've been eating over the last, um, over the last year. So I pulled these back from, from, from a, a few weeks and a few months ago. So this, you know, this is, guys, this is how I think is like the perfect like low carb Say lunch to the half. So this is a, a typical meal of what I a, a typical meal of what I would eat when I'm breaking my fast to get an adequate amount of protein to keep the carbs low to keep the fiber high. See the key when you eat low carb is they still take in that 25 30 grams of fiber. Most people mess up I think when they go low carb they don't get enough they they don't eat enough fiber. So what I have here is my can of sardines. You know how I love sardines, right? High in those omega threes, loaded with um complete protein. You get about 25, 26 grams of protein in the can of sardines. Plus, why sardines are so good besides the protein, and they're also high in those omega-3, those essential fatty acids. You're also eating the skin of the sardine. You're eating the bones. So you're getting the calcium. You're getting the connective tissue. So it's really like eating from head to tail. You really get everything. The heads are cut, are cut off of these sardines. But you're really getting collagen. You're getting the connective tissue. It's so good for you. So I'm probably getting about 25 grams of protein there. And I think this was left over from my 92 before. Then I got two chicken chicken thighs, you know, seasoned with a little extra virgin olive oil, some oregano, you know, salt, salt and pepper. So that, that'll give me, that brings me up to probably 60 grams of protein, like I'm talking about right there, which is like ideal. Right. Then I have my avocado. Avocado is once again, superfood, right? Loaded with potassium. The adequate intake of potassium is 4,700 milligrams a day. Most people don't come anywhere close. So I always prioritize potassium too. 
Sometimes I even do a celery drink, you know, but I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna do that this week just to keep the calories down. So I'm getting probably by 15, 16 grams of fiber there. I'm getting about 1,000 milligrams of potassium, plus high on those monounsaturated fats. So see how you look at this meal. It's a whole natural food meal. Most of the calories are from fat because of the avocado, because of the sardines, and even the chicken thighs. Good amount of protein, but also high fat. And then I'm getting strawberries. Just Strawberries are almost like a free food, meaning that the net carbs in strawberries are so low. It's a low sugar fruit. It makes the meal so much more enjoyable when you have, just, and what are these, are five, five or six strawberries? It, I mean, I absolutely love it. So the net carbs, what I mean by net carbs is total carbs minus fiber. Like an avocado might have 25 grams of carbs in it, but it also has 17, 18 grams of fiber. So the net carbs of an avocado, five, six, seven grams. So this is a really low carb, high fat, high protein type meal, ideal, and relatively low in calories too. Let's see what Juicy's got here. So what is the point of hard cardio in regards to fat loss, not improving cardiovascular? If you're going hard on cardio and then burning glycogen, then you would burn more, you know, I wouldn't worry about that burning muscle with hard cardio. It depends on how long you do it. I would really look at it like this. Any type of exercise you're doing, you wanna create a response for what you're doing. Meaning that when I look at cardio as when I'm doing my HIIT training, I'm increasing my VO2 max, right? I'm making my heart and my cardiovascular system stronger. I'm increasing my ability to consume oxygen. And there's links to long, increased longevity when you have a higher VO2 max. So those short heart workers are doing that. If they're short enough, say 20 minutes or less, I'm not worried about burning muscle. If you did those crazy workouts, like say you did like a, a, a you know, like a soul cycle or Peloton spin class that lasted excessively long, like 90 minutes or, or 60 minutes, maybe you'll dip in the muscle, but depending upon what else you're doing, right? Then I do my long, easy cardio to build an aerobic base for mental health to burn a little bit of body fat. And then I do resistance training to maintain and put on muscle mass. And I kind of like split it up like that. You know, everything intertwines and interconnects and you have to find the right formula, you have to experiment, but I wouldn't worry about it burning muscle. Like, let's say, I wouldn't say you, say that aerobic exercise is better than anaerobic for fat loss. It may be wrong, okay, beneficial. And right, and, and I should have said this, which I didn't, but now that I read, read your question again. And then I would control your weight, like your body fat levels by how you eat. So work out to create the response you want. Do your high intensity cardio for VO2 max, do your long, easy cardio for base building and for mental health, right? Do your resistance training to maintain and put on muscle mass but don't necessarily make that the primary way in which you're controlling your weight or your body fat levels. Yes, you can do kind of things like what I'm doing this week before, which is somewhat extreme, but really control your weight by the diet you're eating and these intermittent fasting and eating a whole natural food diet. Try to separate the two. Because like they say, and it's a common saying, right? You can't out-exercise out a bad diet, you really can. not You can do it temporarily. You know, you can overtrain and work out too hard for too long you know, and risk hurting yourself and maybe do it that way, but it's not a long-term strategy at all. Separate the two, control your weight with your diet, work out to create the response you want. Okay, Mike, what about high magnesium foods? Yeah, you know, it's, it's really hard. Magnesium is tough too. I think nuts are high in magnesium. I even think um, there's some magnesium in the sardines and maybe salmon and things like that. You want about 400 milligrams of magnesium every single day. I personally do take a magnesium citrate supplement, not every night, but a lot of nights, two to 400 milligrams. Uh, I take, I think Blue Bond is the brand that I take. They're pretty big pills, the magnesium citrate pills. I like citrate, also pull some water into your colon, good for getting rid of constipation like that. I think I, I did a um, one of those video graphs of food tie and magnesium. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll list that below there. It has the pop into my head, but I think, I think the salmon, the sardines, um, nuts have a decent amount of magnesium in it, but it's 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 hard getting enough magnesium. I even think taking maybe 200 milligrams or so of magnesium a day probably is a good thing to take. And it's really it's a real inexpensive supplement, but the pills are kind of big. That's the only downside. Plus, magnesium also helps you sleep at night. It's relaxing. I think it's a good thing to do before bed. Take two to 400 milligrams of magnesium citrate. And there's all different forms of magnesium. That's the one I seem to like. It just agrees with me. Okay, let's see what Gene says. Okay, is too mad just a technique to reduce calorie consumption, or is there any other benefits for f to fasting? Yeah, no, I, I would say Gene, most of it 
too mad. I would look at it as this. First of all, yes, it's a great way to reduce calories without necessarily counting calories. Right? If you're always counting calories and tracking everything, you have it's harder to do, but you'll know exactly what's going on. But yes, too mad is a great way to keep calories in line. Plus, just think you're only getting those two insulin spikes. You're only going into mTOR, that growth phase, twice, which is really good. See, I think that's one of the reasons why I think fasting, and maybe the research hasn't caught up to this. The animal studies, like just loves, those rodent studies on fasting is just unreal. The health benefits and the longevity benefits. But most of the human studies, I think there are some great ones showing the benefits, but most of the human studies show that intermittent fasting is pretty much no better than restricting calories. Right, they both work incredibly well. I think it's easier to restrict calories through these intermittent fasting strategies like two math, things like that. But what I think the research is gonna show down the road is that you want that right that nice balance between mTOR, like growth signaling when you're eating and you're spiking insulin and you're rebuilding the body, and then you also want the benefit of being in a facet state for like you're saying, for like sixteen hours, where Insulin is low, you're increasing your insulin sensitivity, right? You're going into more of, of a, say, repair phase. Like AMPK is increasing, and also like the sirtuins, you know, all those things that you're getting. That's why I do think intermittent fasting and TUMAD is much better for your health when you, like, you're getting the best of both worlds, you know? You know what, actually, I'm, I'm getting a little echo. Let me see, someone has the, the noise kind of loud near me, so let me, let me, I'm just gonna do a pause for a second. Hey, sorry guys. You know what? I, you know what that was? I, I think my wife was um, actually watching the live stream, which she, sometimes she doesn't do that. And I was she had it cranked up so loud that I was hearing myself talk. I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. So yeah, Gene. So definitely, I, I think a couple of things. Right. I think too mad is a great way to reduce calories. Plus, being in that fasted state for 16 hours for me, I think is so much healthier for longevity and just for metabolic type things to truly be in a fasted state as opposed to just restricting calories and constantly getting those little insulin spikes throughout the day. And I think, even though there, there may not be too much research saying that right now, I think five, 10 years from now, when these more and more studies come out, I think it's really gonna be pretty conclusive that you know eating and not eating is it's just really the way to go, for sure. Let's see, oh, Steve, hey, hey, Steve, okay. Do you have sardines yet in olive oil or water? You know, Steve, I buy, this is the brand I buy. I buy the Henry and Lisa's. If you want, I'll list it below this. And I do buy it in, in it comes in an organic extra virgin olive oil. I love them. It's like a small company. I think they're from Maine. I'm not quite sure. I don't want to get that wrong. But I have it listed. Even if you go to, I, I'll put a link below this. And I like that, I like the brand for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's a PBA free can. I used to buy Wild Planet, which is another popular brand, and they're wild caught sardines, obviously. But they don't have a PBA free can. And, you know, like I said, I don't run, I don't chase fat, but I'm not gonna run away from extra virgin olive oil. I think it's one of the healthiest fats you can eat. If you really want to restrict calories, you can buy them in water. But they, t in my opinion, they taste so much better with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And I buy the ones that are flavored, meaning that it, it either comes lemon, or it may come with, um, I forget the other flavor. There's a couple of different flavors they add to. Mostly, I think I personally buy like the lemon juice, extra virgin olive oil, and I absolutely love them. Sometimes, they, if you look at this plate, sometimes you get lucky and they give you four. And look at the size of those sardines. Plus, you don't have to worry about the mercury and all that because they're so low on the food chain. I love them, but you can try Wild Planet too. But I go with the extra virgin olive oil, the flavored ones. Um, and you'll see with some of the other meals here too. So it's usually. 
Okay, is it the same for everyone where they lose fat first? For me, I feel, no, it's not the same for everyone. Everyone's gonna be totally different. But typically men and women, right? Women generally lose their, lose their body fat and their abs. You know, you see gals who, who would like sh like rip midsection, but their, their gluten thighs can still have a little bit of body fat on them. And men, it seems like they lose it on their face. They lose it where they don't want to on maybe their arms. And then they keep the belly fat in their belly. But every, everyone is different. Everyone is different on that. Okay. Do you think, um, um, okay, do you think of metabolism hacks like cold showers, good nights, good night's sleep, ways to improve metabolism without protein, boosting metabolism while fasting. Okay, what Juicy is talking about, yeah, there's definitely something to it. All, all, it seems like all these biohackers and all these fitness people are all talking about now these um, cold showers, cold plunging to increase the amount of brown fat. There's different types of fat on your body. You know, like, you know the fat that's like jiggles on your arm, that's the subcutaneous fat, like the white fat, which is somewhat protective, right? When you're eating um, excess calories, right? You want to lower blood sugar and store away these excess calories. You want to store them in fat cells. So it's kind of a good thing, right? And also, fat cells release the hormone leptin, which tells the brain to stop eating. That's why, like, when you when you start increasing your body fat, your subcutaneous fat, you the body releases more leptin, and it says, "Hey, slow down! You're taking in too many calories." Unfortunately, just like people become insulin resistant, they can become leptin resistant, meaning that. These fat cells are releasing leptin, but the brain is just not responding to it. That's one another big issue when it comes to like constantly, constantly overeating and things like that. So what now there's also something called brown fat, which like what babies are born with a lot of brown fat. See, brown fat is high in mitochondria. Mitochondria are like the uh, the powerhouses of the cell. That means there's a thermic effect. They create heat, they burn calories. So what people are doing now is that when you expose yourself to cold temperatures, like take, taking cold showers, taking ice plunges, it's a little debatable on to what degree, like how cold does the water have to be, how long do you have to be in a shower. And there's some studies and, you know, maybe I think maybe a two minute cold shower is probably long enough, but you can go longer. You know, it seems to increase the amount of brown fat within your body if you do this consistently over time which can increase your metabolism. And Ben Greenfeld's a big believer in that. Laurel, Laurel Hamilton, you know, the big wave surfer, he's a big believer in it. Even um, the other guy I follow, Andrew Huberman, Huberman Labs, the professor from Stanford, he's a big believer in it. They're, both, they're also a big believer in saunas, heat shock proteins, you know, which also is really elevated. Like being in a sauna, if you take your pulse and your pulse goes up 20, 30 beats, it's almost like doing an aerobic workout to some degree. There's been studies showing that it helps longevity, helps aerobic fitness. So yes, take, I think that's that's somewhat of a hack. I personally have Renaud's disease. I don't know if I, I, I think I've mentioned to you guys before where I go completely white. One of my most popular videos on the YouTube channel is why I stopped taking cold showers because I get the Renaud's so bad. I'm still gonna experiment with it because I do think there is benefit to it. But even working out and just eating healthy can help you with brown fat as well too. And then the third type of fat is the worst type of fat, is that visceral fat, right? That's the fat, that's that deep organ fat, you know, that's around your midsection, you know, that actually gets it gets internally around your organs. It seems like when you increase your visceral fat, and that comes from like eating like too much fructose, like high fructose corn syrup processed food, because fructose goes right to the liver to be processed. You don't get the spike in in insulin. That seems to be really linked to metabolic syndrome and type two diabetes and all the horrible things. So you really wanna reduce visceral fat. You keep the subcutaneous fat on the control, obviously, right? And you wanna have as much brown fat as you possibly can, right? Okay. Can you explain why sometimes my fat in my legs feels hard and, and this flat, and you know, it's really hard to say, you know, why it, sometimes it feels hard or flat, you know, it's just your own body. It, you know, it's, it's hard to say. That's a hard question to answer. Okay, let's go over. I think there's another sardine on meal here. Let me see what I got. Let's see. Let's get rid of that. And get rid of that. Let's see what the news is. Oh, I don't know how juicy juicy got in there. Let's see. Okay, so this is a, I, I guess I lean a little bit more towards um as you can see towards towards pescatarian type eating. Even though I do eat red meat, most of my animal protein is fish. So this is like a typical dinner. So even though I had the sardines and the chicken thighs for lunch. I also had some fish for dinner. I think this is um, still had trout, which is kind of like a salmon, a high oily fish, you know, high in those omega threes. And when you look at this, this is also, I don't know, a good ten ounce piece of um, a fish here. 
I'm probably getting another 60 grams of protein. So, so that brings me up to a, say 120 grams of protein for the day, really close to my goal of 150. And then I just have, I like to always pick two different colored vegetable, different vitamins, different minerals, different nutrients, high in fiber, low in calories. So this is just a tomato and onion salad, which I love. You get the red, you know, high, it's so good for you. And then I got some asparagus and I just have some extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper on this. The calories are relatively low. If you see there's no grains, there's no potatoes, there's no things, there's no starches like that. This is just such a great way to eat. And then in addition, I didn't put that, see, just to get my protein up to 150 grams, what I probably will do too is I'll probably do one scoop of the whey protein um, powder. Just adds 120 calories just in a glass of water. I love drinking it. You know, I may do that either in between these meals or maybe even um, like more post-workout, like before I leave the gym after my workout, I may down like a protein shake. Good for protein synthesis, just for recovery. Then when I get home, I'll do that other meal, the sardines, and I'll do this. And so it's just a such simple eating. And this is, this is, I think, the best way to eat. Uh, Je hey, Jeff, how you doing? Is there a link um, you have for the full body resistance workout you talked about earlier? You know, I, I, I don't, but I think I, ha I think I have some things. I don't know if I have a link, but I, I've done other, um, I'll put a link, because I have other videos that really maps out the exact exercises more as opposed to just the general concept um, for this today. So I, I think I do have something like that. I'll, I'll link that up. I gotta remember to do that. It's like, I see that you guys are on Facebook, which is good. So this, 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 yeah, I think I'm broadcasting on everything today. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on, I think, LinkedIn, YouTube. I think so it worked up, I guess it went through today. We had a problem last week. I don't know if you guys realized, and gals, um, for some reason, the link that I gave everyone to like watch the live stream, it didn't go through. And everyone was getting these blank links. I know Steve has, Steve was able to figure it out. If you, Steve's an incredible computer guy. I think Gene figured it out. But I think a lot of people had trouble logging in, which I was, so I'm sorry about that. Okay, let's keep this going, that's my fish. Okay, this is just, I guess you, you, you're getting my trend. This is like another thing I like to have. When it comes to lunches, everything for my lunches, it's like, it's like, uh, like Steve said, that it's, it's like the canned sardines. It's something that I can quickly make that I don't necessarily have to cook. Sometimes I'll boil up some hard boiled eggs and I'll have those in the refrigerator pre-made. See, I think also a big part of eating well is just like meal prepping. It's just knowing that you're having these things in the, in the home that you don't have to think about, it, you don't have to grab something bad. So what I have here, this is just smoked salmon. I buy this at Whole Foods. I know people say, oh Mike, sometimes you're picking expensive ingredients, but actually I get four ounces of smoked salmon at Whole Foods their home brand, that 365 brand, I think for like on sale for $6.99 all the time. You know, so this whole meal is probably like an $8 meal for me. So I have four ounces of smoked salmon, 25 grams of protein, high to make it Once again, same can of sardines. Instead of instead of the strawberries, my fruits are pretty much berries. I got some raspberries here. You know, maybe half to a whole avocado. Very same meal, very similar to the meal before. Let me see what dinner I went with that night. Let's see, I think I did. Right, see, I'm, if you see, if you're noticing, this is how I'm reducing calories because I'm definitely eating a little bit less what I'm gonna do for this week. So this is, I don't even know what fish this is to me. I don't think it's salmon. It, it could be um, Arctic char, that's what it looks like to me. We eat that a lot too. We do Arctic charred, steelhead trout, wild caught salmon. You know those high omega-3 oily type fishes. Then I got some mushrooms, like two different colored vegetables, mushrooms, string beans. And then once again, how I'm reducing calories is that typically maybe after dinner I would have a third of a bar of dark chocolate. I'm not gonna do that this week because I'm gonna eliminate 190 calories there. Like things like that. I won't maybe grab the handful of walnuts or maybe like salted almonds. I like lightly salted almonds too, I'll eat those. So I'm gonna be reducing calories like that. Let's see what Jess got. Yep, I missed the first 20 minutes or so last week because I was waiting for, for you. Oh, sorry about that. But someone posted a link to the other one. Yeah, I know, I don't know what happened. It's kind of weird because I, I don't know what happened. And it went broadcast everywhere. It went to LinkedIn, it went all over the place and there was no link to it get it. You had to go to my like YouTube channel to actually click the link. It was, was kind of weird. Let me give you some other hamburger, some other ideas. Like, okay, this is an example, same thing. This I did cook a couple of hamburger patties but this is a great low carb lunch. Once again, I got my four ounces of smoked salmon from Whole Foods and hamburger. But hamburger patties, I gotta say, are probably the most inexpensive way to get good quality protein. 
Even if you go grass fed, grass finished, they're really affordable. I do go relatively lean. I like the 90% lean, 10% fat burgers. You make these up in under 10 minutes, six, seven minutes. Once again, I'm about getting 60 grams of protein here, maybe a little more. I think olives are a great thing too, low carb olives. So instead of, I guess you would call that a fruit, but it's not obviously just a low sugar fruit with an avocado. You can't eat better than this. Great low carb, high protein, high fat type meal. Just absolutely ideal. Let's see, yeah, uh, James, remember, it's always a little more expensive to eat healthy, no dollar menu. <laughs> that was totally true, James, I agree. I know, it's interesting because I've been, like I said, I've been doing so good on TikTok. I don't know why, every video I do on TikTok does incredibly well. And but people get on my case on TikTok for recommending foods like this. It's, oh, I can't afford smoked salmon. I've been eating those, you know, those salmon raw fish eggs. But, I, you know, whole foods, you can overpay for certain things. Other things, I think, are so affordable at Whole Foods. The produce at Whole Foods, you cannot beat it. The prices for like those big containers of arugula salad, avocados are really affordable at um, Whole Foods. The smoked salmon, those salmon roll fish eggs, the Whole Food brand, same thing. Ten dollars for like a nice container, you get like three, you get three servings out of it. In, like Steve asked about those uh, sardines. If you, that's the thing, they're really off on Whole Foods. So, those sardines at Whole Foods. Of five dollars and forty nine cents, I can buy them for three fifty at my local deli, which is called the Chico's Italian Deli right near me. So for some reason, they're way too high on the on the sardines, and actually the Chico's run puts them on sale for two ninety nine, like fifty percent of the time. So I would say, obviously, you know, I don't want to you know anyone to go broke <laughs> trying to buy food that they can't afford, but. Look for the healthy food, and, and even if you gotta go to two or three different supermarkets or places to buy them, you know, find the best price points for the healthy food. If you spend a little time, you really can get these foods pretty affordable. Like nothing I'm, I recommend is really over the top. Like for example, you can buy those caviar salmon roll fish eggs right next to the ones I buy for 10 bucks that they, they sell for 59, but I'm not gonna buy those, even though maybe they may taste better. That's like a, like almost like a delicacy type thing, okay. Right, here's another example of a perfect fish dinner. You see, I, I think this one is probably, that looks more like salmon to me. Hard to say, I got my string beans, then I got a cucumber, tomato, and I think we got a little bit of um, some type of green there. I'm not sure what green, I bet that might be basil. I think my wife does this a lot, and, you know, really well. She does tomato, I mean, tomato, cucumber, and basil. I mean, this thing, this is a low calorie, high protein, high fiber, Super nutritious type meal. This is really how, really how you have to eat. Let's see what James got here. Mike, do you get your eggs at a local farm? I've been doing that here in Southern California. Great taste and cheapy. No, I, I think that's wonderful, James. I would love to do that. I don't. I buy, I think, that brand Vital, which is like, you know, the organic pasture-raised eggs, and they vary tremendously in price. Okay, this is a good example. When I, at the Chico's, which is my local Italian deli right near my house where I'm getting those sardines for like, 350 they sell a dozen of those eggs for 7.99 which is those pasture raised you know organic eggs which is really expensive i can get those at whole foods for 5.99 like two dollars less plus they put them on sale constantly for like 4.99 it's like a steal um you know really you know re really interesting okay uh, do you eat 200 dark chocolate 200 calories of dark chocolate bar and then burn it on the treadmill, for example, you know, Juicy, I wouldn't look at it like that. Like, look, like, like we talked, you know, once again, don't look at trying to out exercise when you eat something that's caloric or may not be the best for you. Look at it separately. Do your workout to create. I know sometimes you understand what do you mean by create the response? Do your aerobics to make your heart stronger, right? To build an aerobic base for good health, and you know to burn a little bit of body fat, right? Because you are burning calories and you're working out. You know, do your resistance training, so you have good muscle on your body, so you have good flexibility. So when you're older, you're not gonna fall and be frail, and you're gonna keep your metabolism up. But don't don't think of like, okay, I'm gonna eat something, I'm gonna eat 300 calories, and I'm gonna go burn it off tomorrow. I'm gonna go jump on the treadmill and burn it off. It's a losing battle. You can do it temporarily, but it's gonna it, it's it's. It's gonna to lead to overtraining, it's the wrong mindset, right? You just wanna eat, you don't wanna to eat too much, you wanna eat healthy, you know, you don't wanna to try to out exercise eating something bad. Even though I don't think dark chocolate is really bad, but when I'm cutting out calories, it's an easy way 
for me to reduce two to 300 calories a day by just not eating the dark chocolate. You know, as, and, and plus, because I still want to keep my nutrition up. Okay, Mike, do you? Okay, right now, the, you know, the farmers, see what Gene's got? Okay. I'm always, I'm always confused if I should eat fruits or not because they have a lot of fructose. I want to worry about, okay. It's a, first of all, if that's your only source of fructose, I would be much, much less concerned about it. And I actually, back to that Peter Teague, I heard him do it, like he did a little video, a cast about this when it comes to recommending fructose to his patients or not. Like if you're eating a lot, a lot of high, fruct, uh, high, you know, high, fruct, high fructose corn syrup, if you're eating processed foods, I know you're not really doing that too much, Gene, then I think it's perfectly okay to have a couple of fruits a day. The good thing about fruit is that, you know, you are getting the fiber, you're getting the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients. So I wouldn't worry about it, especially if you're going with those low sugar type fruits, like your berries, like your blueberries, your strawberries, you know, your raspberries, things like that. Even some oil, even just fruit in general. I think you're okay, as long as you don't overdo it. A, a cup or two a day, a two, limit yourself to like two fruits. But why people are so concerned about fructose, that's why Gene is, why Gene is mentioning this, is that fructose is different than most other sugars. It's probably the worst sugar to eat. Definitely if you're taking it in the form of like high fructose corn syrup, because fructose, many, many years ago, it's funny because doctors felt like it was a health, health, healthy sugar because fructose doesn't spike insulin. See, fructose goes right to the liver to be processed. The problem is, is that the liver can only process so much sugar at any one time. Like the liver, like the muscles can hold maybe 2,000 calories of stored excess sugars and carbs in the form of glycogen in the muscle. See, and that's another confusing thing. Liver glycogen and muscle glycogen are two separate things. Once glycogen goes into the muscles, it stays there. You can burn it up through exercise, but it doesn't leave and go back into the bloodstream. Whereas the liver is controlling everything. The liver is, is releasing glucose to raise blood sugar, it's releasing glucagon to lower blood sugar. So, you know, you know, like your brain needs glucose, the liver is gonna release glucose. So it's not coming from the muscles. You can easily overwhelm your liver by taking in too much fructose. So if you're eating processed foods and you're drinking sodas and you're drinking, and you look at high fructose corn syrup on, on the label of anything, it's like in everything. Cereals, that foods you think are healthy are just ruined by high fructose corn syrup. It's in everything. It's such an easy, inexpensive way for manufacturers to sweeten things and make them taste so much better. So if you're really not eating processed foods and eating a relatively good whole whole natural diet, I think a fruit or two a day is totally okay. But then again, it gets a little confusing because right, olives are fruits, right? Avocados are fruits, tomatoes are fruits, right? You know, those are relatively low sugar, low fructose type fruits, but things like, you know, there are some fruits that are really high, like a, like a pineapples and papaya and things like that. But it's interesting. I know we talked about him before, Paul Saladino, who's on the carnivore diet. He wrote the book, The Carnivore Code. He eats a lot of fruit. His, his, he, he, this is the Joe Rogan diet now too. They eat like tons of, they eat a lot of animal protein, chicken, fish, meat, things like that. More animal, more red meat, you know, organ meat. And then they eat a decent amount of fruit. And they're not worried about the fructose because the, the rest of their diet is so low on fructose, they don't think it's an issue. So I think, Gene, I think you can have a couple of fruits. I do. But I wouldn't, you know, eat half a watermelon, you know, or just like things like that. I eat, eat a, I wouldn't eat a whole pineapple, eat some berries, you know, maybe one or two other fruits, you know, here and there. So there's like, once again, this is like a per perfect dinner. I thought I had a couple more. Did I have any more um, examples? Did I show you this one? I showed you that one. Let's go over all that. All right, I think we're almost done here. All right, guys, so there we go. So that's my general, this, uh, you know, and this is also, um, you can also do something like this whenever you're just motivated and whenever you know, you can even do something like this. This is also great for holidays, like you know, um, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, or you know, or you're going, you're gonna be going to a wedding, you can have a big, I mean, any type of event where, where you know you're gonna be overeating and you know that you don't wanna wake up the next next day and be feel miserable and not enjoy yourself. And also when you have an event coming up or a vacation coming up and you're just in a good mindset and you're motivated, it, it's good to do a program like this, just to tighten things up for a week, lose some water weight, deplete your glycogen stores, lose three, four pounds. So then when you have this event or you have this vacation or whatever you're looking to do, you can just indulge yourself guilt-free and really enjoy it. Like I wouldn't wanna go on vacation next Sunday weighing exactly what I weigh now. You know, because then I'm gonna say, ah, you know, I, I'm gonna feel guilty having my that Italian, you know, hero on the beach. I'm gonna feel guilty drinking some beer. I wanna be able to really enjoy myself. So I really do like to do this 
a week before. You know, cut back, lose a few pounds, empty my muscles from glycogen so I can go eat some carbohydrates and not feel bad. And um, it's good. I mean, it's something to try. I think it's good. And it's in my same concept. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoy this. I think we've been going like an hour and 25. Interesting. Next, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do next Sunday. I think it might be fun if I can do the live stream while I'm driving. Obviously, I'll have someone like working the camera. Maybe I'll have my daughter or my wife kind of read the questions to me. Maybe we'll do like a Q&A or maybe. I'm not sure what we'll do. But, uh, you know, I'm going to be a little flexible on next Sunday for the live stream. But otherwise, I'll, I'll be right back on track the following week. Maybe we'll do that alternate day fasting type thing. But any other questions now before I go? And I really appreciate all the regulars, you know, James, Jeff, Mike, Gene. Gene, once again, I really appreciate those super chats. I really love it. It really helps me keep the channel going. Stevie, VJ, and John are so excited you guys showed up. I can't wait to see you guys again. And I, I think Nicole is in, is in um, I saw some pictures. I think she was in South Africa. It looks incredible. I see, I see them with like, with <laughs> giraffes and, and uh, like big, um, all these big incredible animals all around them. You know, giraffes and uh, like and elephants and stuff like that. Un unreal. Sounds like an amazing trip. Juicy, thanks for showing up and all your questions. Harriet, Rose, everyone, this was great. Um, I don't want to leave anybody out. Richard, Blue Sky, Rose, everyone, thanks. Really appreciate everyone showing up. So quickly, any questions before I go? Are we good? All right, have a wonderful week. Stick to it and, and do this plan with me next week. Do it with me anyway, even if you're, even if you're not going away. It'll be a fun thing to do. If you have any questions, let me know. Take care, everyone. Uh, yeah, thanks for showing up. Great.